Welcome back to Stu Structures. I am Mark Stewart and we're here to do some scratch building. Oftentimes when you want something for your model railroad it's just not available in kit form. So I'm here to show you how to go through the process of scratch building these structures for your model railroad. We'll go through the entire process of modeling from uh, coming up with the resources, pictures, prints, uh, measurements, to getting the materials for the, the structure and then uh, the, going through the whole process of building the structures. And then oftentimes you'll have the uh, self-satisfaction of the fact that you built this for your model railroad and that no one else is going to have one exactly like it. This is an exciting process that uh, we'll go through in this channel and you'll hopefully you'll learn how to scratch build structures for yourself. So sit back, grab a cup of coffee, Grab your tools and your materials and let's do some scratch building. So welcome back to Stu Structures. I am Mark Stewart and you know we're here to continue working on the Jitney. And also I'm gonna look through some other projects. I need to figure out what I'm gonna work on, you know, starting up as I'm getting finished with this one, because I'm working, you know, like I said before, on two or three things at a time. So stay tuned for a week in the life of a model railroader. Now, you know, the, the Jitney I showed you these pictures before and we had kind of came up with this uh, you know, a makeshift uh, front end for this from an old um, uh, Model K truck, I think it was. But in any case, here's just a couple more pictures of that. And you can see the boxes that were used for the passengers behind are just basically wooden boxes. So I'm looking at ways of possibly going ahead and getting those started as we work on the other parts of this. And, you know, I have this... Uh, wood here that's made from northeastern and it, you know it's just really mimics the boards that were on the side of that truck so i'm going to go ahead and cut the, the panels to size and you know i'm just going slightly wider than just a, a small piece of ho gauge track that i have here and kind of just get judging the size and width and the length of these from the pictures that i have sitting on the railroad tracks you know, and it's probably not going to be an exact duplicate, but, you know, I cut the fronts of these and go ahead and mark out the sides and cut it to where it'll set down on that truck front end. And, you know, the back sides of all four sides of these, I'm cutting the back corners to 45s like this so I can get nice, smooth outside corners. And after I make the two panels front and rear for the rear coach, then I come back and cut some long lengths that I need to cut down to size here uh, for the side walls. And then I'm starting to glue these together. And, you know, they, they are slightly warped, so once I put the floor and ceiling in here, it'll pull all the sides square, so I'm not too worried about that. And I like putting things, you know, just in place, and this kind of gives you an idea of where we're headed with this. And, you know, I, I got ahead of myself in gluing all these sides together. I like to pre-cut all my windows and doors and individual walls, but I did not do it for these. So I came up with this just to, you know, as something to brace these so I could cut these out. And while working with these, then this thing just went flying because that piece came loose in the vise. And, I, you know, I spent days looking for that little piece and never did find it. So, you know, I'm coming back and just recutting all those walls. And, yeah, of course, the little piece that goes over the door was really weak, so it came loose, but that's okay. We can glue this all back together. And at this point, that's where I stand with the walls. Now, the front end of the truck you can see here, the piece we have has lights down on it, and the light on this is mounted up above. And then you see this also has a bumper on the front end. And, you know, so these lights on the front of this little truck mechanism here are going to have to be cut off. So I go ahead and do that, and you can see here they're gone. And I need to look at a way of mounting those bumpers. And the steel frame that comes from underneath the truck and the motor and everything, I, you know, went through my evergreen plastics and I found these two by threes that pretty much are just real close to the same size as what the frame members are under this truck. 
Now where the fenders come down here and meet all this and the radiator on either side, I just made sure this nice open little square groove was cut down in both sides. And I just cut two pieces of this 2 by 3 to give me uprights at the right angle to go ahead and mount those onto the frame so that they become kind of the frame. And all this, this doesn't really show it really good. They are glued in place here. And I just come back a couple of times and add a little glue to them to make sure there's a good strong bond there. Now these seats out of the packages that we talked about previously, you can see here, I just went ahead and cut all the floor members loose so they're all individual benches. And they're way too wide to put two of these wide in the, in the truck. So I cut these off in intentions and using these with the armrests on one side in the units, but they're just a little wide and I don't want to cut them again, so I'm going to end up using uh, the small halves of the seats that I cut without armrests. And these wheels, you know, this is how we were in the last video. When I came back and tried to, tried to pre-drill these, uh, the center caps just broke loose out of the wheels, but at least it still allowed me to line up the drill and everything. So once I glue those end caps onto the axles, what I do is just come back and set these on my uh, grid board like this and kind of eyeball this to put those in place. Then I glue the other side on while it's sitting on this track and play with it as the glue sets up just to make sure everything's nice and horizontal and you know everything looks okay. Remember this is going to be static and not actually working as well. So um, I'm just going to give you a, a brief glimpse at what I'm getting into here for my other project while I'm working on this Jitney. Uh, I just this the week I didn't have a whole lot of time to put towards the jitney. I wish I'd have had more, but man, it's springtime, and you know I, you know most of you know that I grow landscape shrubbery. I have a nursery, and uh, I also grow fruit. I'm a fruit farmer. Well, the other thing I decided to take on this year is another third prong to the business as uh, cut flowers for the floral industry. Uh, I didn't realize it, but this country really brings in 90 some percent of their flowers from South America and other places. We don't even grow our own flowers in this country. There's something wrong with that. So in any case, it's just another place in the market where I can grow cheap enough and undercut the market and have good profit margins. So, you know, I'm just going to experiment with it on a small scale this uh, year and do some learning with it. Uh, but it does involve more time prepping beds, getting everything ready to grow the flowers, ordering in the products I need to do this with this year. Uh, so, you know, I'm getting involved in that too. And the nursery business alone right now is a full time job. Uh, you know, as long as there's light or plastic to work under when it's raining or whatever, right now I'm working and doing very little breathing. So in any case, not that much got done on the Jitney. That was the whole reason for that. Uh, I get on tangents from time to time. But uh, the other project uh, that I want to start working on was a coaling tower. And I started this project years and years and years ago. And as I go through some of this and show you what it is and what I'm working on, I'll explain more in detail about this. Now here's some pictures of the original coaling tower that I'm modeling. You know, this was a 600 ton coaling tower. This was just a massive structure, one of the biggest ones I've ever seen anywhere in the country. There's a lot of them out there, 400, 460 tons, but this 600 ton coaling tower is just huge. It fed coal to steam locomotives on four tracks, and then it had this other uh, covered platform on this side where they actually loaded the coal into the facility and it also uh, loaded sand there as well because the sanding facilities were also included within this same structure. Uh, later on they did uh, move the sand facilities to a separate uh, area which you can see out here where the diesels are. But you know I originally started this with a Walters kit and you know it's a lot smaller than 600 tons and I ended up not being able to use a whole lot out of that kit for the main structure. This piece here I did but I had to change these side panels to four panel instead of I think it was a three panel and this piece here that met the cooling tower I had to uh, just totally scratch build. I did use the windows from the original tower 
Uh, but you can just see how a lot of this is damaged and some of the gluing has came undone. Now this underneath uh, of the building, I did use out of that Walther's kit, which makes the building a little narrow in this regard, but the, the co part that covers the four tracks is to scale. And the whole t uh, head house on top, the whole structure, I had to scratch build. And, you know, I just had to change all these panels and everything. So it ended up being probably 98% scratch built. And, you know, I don't know, 5 or 10% maybe, uh, you know, parts out of the Walther's kit. Now I am going to be able to reuse all the culling chutes, you know, the windows, doors, uh, some of the platforms, stuff like that. And uh, you know, all the there's a lot of stairs and ladders and stuff that wrap from clear up at the top of this all the way down through the side. So I grabbed this box here that just has all that kind of stuff that I've bought over the years or you know, bought used parts of kits and that kind of thing. And there's just you know, some teachy parts in here and you know, Walter's parts out of kits and a lot of different stuff in here, and it's all ladders and handrails and open great walkways and handrails and you know just everything that's like that and i just have, over the years have thrown it all into this box i you know i keep everything and a lot of most of the time it gives me materials to work for for most of my job so you know it's a good thing but you know some of these i had started to build from some of this before too and you know some of this isn't going to work for what i need but you know it's in here in case I, I do need it when i come across this stuff and you know and some of this is metal open great which is real nice i think it was probably for the top of freight cars or something at one time but uh you know here's some of the sub assemblies that you can see that i had started to build and you know they're a little damaged too i'm gonna have to back and re-glue and maybe replace some parts and you can see this one that I started scratch building that went up to that third floor down to the next de door down and this came on down and wrapped around the building and went on down to ground level from here and those I haven't even started and you know I'm gonna have to come up with the bracing to mount them to the walls and you know but I just I want to get this stabilized and put together so I can get rid of it so there you have week two in the life of a model railroader uh, you know, like I said earlier, I just didn't have a lot of time to spend on the Jitney this week. After dark a couple of evenings, I did go through this coaling tower and get some of that laid out and started to find all the resources that I have on file and that kind of thing for it and looking for parts and all that. So at least I was able to spend a little time here and there to get my next project kind of to the point I can get started on something with it. Uh, I started this, oh my God, probably the 90s sometime. Uh, late 90s, probably 97, 98, I started building this coaling tower and it kind of went in a box at one point and I got away from model trains for a little while because, you know, life, my life just seems to go through many turbulent sessions. Uh, so in any case, um, I appreciate you coming back and sharing this, this time with me this week. Uh, you know, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these videos. You know, a lot of people do just like watching single video vi videos on builds of specific models. And as I get into doing more than one project a week here, uh, you know, I'm going to continue doing these videos this way. But maybe what I'll do is after I've went through these sessions and did these life in the week of, and I do finish a uh, model or something, maybe I'll go back and just do individual buildings like the Jitney, you know, it could probably be a one video or two video build when it's all said and done. Uh, you know, I'm only getting a little done each week, but it'll start coming together quick here. But I could go back later and add a bit video just of that for those people that want to see videos of single builds and, you know, not the menagerie that I go through in a week. Um, I'm not sure. I, I, you know, it depends on time and everything involved. Uh, if I lose a few subscript subscribers in the meantime because they don't like the new format and what I'm doing, you know, it is what it is. I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't do it to intentionally hurt anybody's feelings or do things that people expect me to do. Um, this is a hobby, and this is out there for the enjoyment of people. The only reason I do these videos is because a lot of people want to know how to scratch build. 
and even though I'm working on two or three projects in a week, you know, it's still techniques on scratch building, you know, whether it's one thing, two things, three things, or whatever I'm doing during that week. And in there is throwing some history and, you know, other things as well. But uh, I want to continue on this process for the time being, and I'm sorry if you don't appreciate my new format as being the a life in a week in the life of a model railroader. But with my life right now, if I don't do this this way, I will not have enough to put up a video each week. This one is, should have been out last Friday, and it's just coming out now. So I'm already behind on what little bit I did get done this week. Uh, I mean, maybe you're willing to wait every two or three weeks for a video and just do that specifically. Uh, but I, I would like to have some content out there every week. And, you know, a lot of people, not that this is a hangout, but a lot of people just like watching 15, 20 minutes of what I'm doing each week. So for those of you that don't agree with this, I'm sorry. If I can come back later and put these videos up as single builds, I will do that. Uh, it's not going to happen for a while because my life right now is on uh, empty uh, time-wise. I, I just, with everything going on, I, I'm not going to be able to breathe for about the next two months. Uh, so it is what it is and to those of you that are disturbed by that, I am sorry. It, it, it is a hobby and I'm going to enjoy it just the same as everybody else. When making these videos become a job, I will no longer be doing these videos. Uh, I'm going to proceed with the hobby the way I want to proceed with the hobby. And if you don't agree with that, well, I'm sorry. Uh, but that's, that's the way it is. In any case, thank you for coming back and sharing this time with me. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. Uh, like and share this material with other people out there. A lot of people really do want to know how to scratch build buildings. Uh, Sparky's house, if you go back to the beginning of that, I mean, we were having to come up with scales for things from a single you know, entry door, which was three feet uh, by six feet eight, you know, and that's how I figured out the measurements for the whole house. I looked at the batten siding that was above the door and said, okay, well, these boards have to be X amount inches wide, and I knew within an inch or two about probably the width of those boards because that's how many it took to make a three foot wide door. And from there, I looked at walls. All right, there's this many boards in that wall. If each of these boards is X amount wide, then that means this wall is X amount width, you know? And you're not going to get 100%, but a lot of people want to know how to do that. And that's why I put these out there. Uh, you know, it's just to share information. Uh, I'm going to be building all these buildings, and most all of them are going to be scratch built. I do have some... Uh, factory buildings that I am going to be working on here and there and throwing in uh, just uh, kind of give you heads up on some manufacturers various things like that that I run into from time to time but I hope you enjoy this material and I will be back uh, hopefully within the next week and get another video up I'm gonna get them out as quick as I can even if they're short and sweet or whatever and try to put something out there uh, so enjoy your trains as we get back into the warmer season, more people are in their yards or things. And, uh, you know, right now my life is going to be slowing down with the trains, but I am going to continue working on stuff. And so hopefully you'll at least have some time to come back and watch these and learn some of the techniques that it'll take you to build something for your model railroad. It's all just about enjoying the hobby. Happy model railroading.